Welcome to a, another episode of By the Railside Podcast Movie Review. My name is Zach. With me today, I've got Jordan. Ha <laughs> ha. And Jeff. I'm the negative Nancy. Yep. He's, uh, we're going to rename the podcast to uh, Arguing with Jeff because he's wrong. About most allegedly. movies. Allegedly. Not allegedly. Uh, don't forget to uh, follow us here on uh, Twitch, twitch.tv slash by the rail side, and then all our socials, um, as well as listen to us on Spotify when we post this there and uh, uh, probably on other uh, places you can get podcasts, but mostly on Spotify. Uh, this week, we reviewed Iron Man, the very first movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It started it all, and uh, it uh, honestly has not really gone downhill from there. It just keeps just keeps climbing. Uh, to tell us all about Iron Man, and the the description from some probably random person uh, is Jordan. Uh, not a random description. I actually took the time to write one myself, so it's going to be even worse. Uh, so we have a self-proclaimed God's gift to humanity, Tony Stark, later referred to as Tony Stank, uh, living the high life, selling weapons of mass destruction to the good guys, and also the bad guys, but he doesn't know that yet, and spreading his seed. This all stops when he gets kidnapped by a terrorist organization looking to get the newest toy of doom, the Jericho Missile. Well, Tony no like he, his clothes, so he builds himself a suit and strands himself in a desert like an idiot. All this history, or all this is history. After his best friend finds him and brings him back home, to the home of these churgers, he feasts and decides he needs to improve the suit. This time, it won't fall off in the desert, uh, and fight terrorists who buy his weapons. Lol, free refunds. Anyways, now he's the Iron Man's, and he can fight real good crime. Yes, real good crime. Real good crime. Fight real good crime. Yeah. What's a want? good crime? A good crime? Uh, probably, like, stealing from a bank. Or That's a good crime? Yeah, I mean, uh, who, who really loses out? A, a billionaire? Oh, no. I mean, as long as you're not going in all, like, suicidal, I'm going to kill everyone. If you just go in with the mission to get the bank's money. Fuck it. Yeah, but the bank's money is my money because I have my money in the bank. <laughs> you have your money in the bank, yeah. but the bank has insurance on the money that's in that bank. So the bank doesn't lose. Technically, did you know that if you have, like, I don't know the exact numbers, but if you have, like, more than $100,000, so you have $2 million and no insurance, and the bank goes under or whatever, you lose everything over the $100,000? Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. That's why you keep it in your mattress. That way, if it burns down, you lose all of it. Exactly. <laughs> go big or go home, baby! <laughs> We're an all-or-nothing household here. <clears throat> I also, my uh, bed is made of asbestos, which doesn't burn, so <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> All right. Uh, now we'll get into the part of the podcast where we decide what we think Jeff is going to rate the movie. Uh, let's start with you, Jordan. Yeah, let's start with someone else, huh? Uh, I think Jeff is going to give this movie a 5.5. Oh, we're going you know big what? this time, are we? Five point four. I retract my statement, Ooh. Jeff. You shouldn't open your mouth. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I think he enjoyed the movie because there's not a whole lot of science in it. That's like they try to explain stuff, um, or like they try to go off the wall. It's basically like guy makes a, a suit in a cave, but he's real smart and he designed all the weapons, so he knows exactly what's in them. Uh, and there's no like, yeah, we just they shrink the space in between his atoms. Like it's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah, fuck yeah. that one. Five, five, <laughs> point four. Uh, I can't wait for Ant Man because I'm gonna tell Jeff how wrong he is. I'm gonna do so much research. I'm gonna read a book about physic. Ooh, just which one? one? Uh, I haven't decided. Probably the uh, one that has to do with ant. <laughs> just a biology <laughs> book about ants. <laughs> no physic. Physic ant. He's been he's been watching. Uh... Uh, who's that ant farmer you watch on Ants YouTube? Ants Canada, and he lives in the <laughs> Philippines. He's great. Right? Have you seen his new compound? I haven't seen the new one. I I forgot about him. I haven't watched him in like a year. Yeah, he's oh, building a new... This is not new... sponsored by uh, Ants Canada. 
Although, if you want to sponsor us in Canada, I am open to it. You send me some ants to take care of them, love them, give them a kiss. No, I won't do that. <laughs> that uh, would hurt. <laughs> but yeah, not to distract too much from the podcast, just a quick, yeah, he moved, I believe he moved to the Philippines, where uh, Canadian money is worth so much more. Uh, so he's building, like, a giant, he's got a giant, like, lot for his house. He's got, uh, like, ant terrariums and animal stuff built into the walls, or building into the walls. It's being uh, Hell out. yeah. And then he's like, you know what? I found some ants in the yard next door. It hasn't sold yet. Fuck it. Let's buy it. So now he's got a whole, like, two properties, basically. One is just an ant paradise, and the other one is a house that is also an ant paradise. So basically, he's the Iron Man of ants. Yes, 100%. That's how we'll bring it back. Um, <laughs> what do you think uh, Jeff is going to give the movie now that we've talked about it relating to ants? Um, I honestly think, I think he's going even, I think he's going higher. Because he, he enjoys Iron Man. He really enjoys the Tony Stark persona. Yeah, he's man. Yeah. And uh, so I'm going to go... I'm going with a six. At least a six. And this is what he's going to... What he's going to rate at that right at the very end. She, you guys are big balling today. Oh, yeah. Well, there's... Uh, there's no real, like love story that needs to be pushed through there is like a bit of a bit of sexual tension in between uh pepper Potts and, and tony stark which hey redheads right they're crazy Sometimes. yeah some yeah, always yeah <laughs> always bad shit um uh but so there's none of that um it's a decent origin story it's sort of Develop, like the character develops really well into when he goes into that hero persona um yeah overall i think it's a, it's gonna be a, at least a six it might even be higher all right well this week how about you guys give your review and then i'll tell you why you're wrong at the end <laughs> 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 all right uh i'll start this one then um unreal unreal movie uh the the fact that this is what uh it was the starting point for the whole mcu which i'm sure they had um some plans for it uh like just to just to go off see if it did well but they took a gamble on this huge especially when they cast uh robert downey jr uh his insurance for films was absolutely insane because he was a uh huge addict um and playboy in real life and stuff like that so um john favreau uh helped uh direct it and write it and he did a fantastic job with it and you can just tell that he has that passion for the uh uh for the movies themselves uh the characters were really well done uh the suit is excellent compared to the comics um and there really there will never be another tony stark like no one's going to be able to pull that off even the people like if i watch the cartoons um even just hearing the the voice on on tony stark it just doesn't seem right to me even with cartoon stuff so um other than that the movie itself no real love story lots of action in it uh the character development was great having that moment where he decided uh or having that shock to the system by being taken and, and almost killed um to help change his his mind and flip it is it's a very real thing like that sort of thing can change a person no matter how much they are um arrogant and and stuff like that so i thought it was really good i i really really enjoy this movie and it, to be honest his the Iron Man's get better the more he's in it, and and all of uh, all the Avengers. What uh, one of the things that actually got me a little bit was when uh, when he first opens up the gift. So Pepper gives him uh, his old um, uh, chess piece that he took out because it was uh, it was obsolete then. When he gives, uh, when he opens up that box and it shows like, this is uh, this is proof that Tony Stark has a heart, like because I've watched all the movies through, it actually gave me like, 
like a little bit either chills, but or like the emotional reaction because I because I know what happens in Endgame right at the end, and it's just like, oh my god. What about you, Jordan? Um, yeah, I really enjoyed the movie. Uh, like you said, it is the first, it was the first one to start off the MCU. I don't know if they were planning on doing the full MCU right from this movie. Um, I was trying to do some, some, some looky looing online and I didn't see anything. Cause I know like, obviously the DVD has, uh, the post-credit scene, but I don't know if it had the, the post-credit scene in theaters. Uh, yeah, it did. Uh, Oh, okay, so yeah. they were just like, "Fuck it, we're gonna go hardcore with the the, Mar- the MCU," um, which I mean, great because comic book movies almost always do well, uh, and if you do the universe well, which I mean, you can't really say anything bad about Marvel uh, except for Jeff and Ant Man. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I really like this movie. Um, There's a couple things that I called like right off the bat. Pretty much, I remember the first time I I, I watched the movie. Um, as soon as I saw Jeff Bridges, I was like, no, he's, a, he's the bad guy. Like he's, he's doing some shady shit. Um, but that's mostly because of like movie tropes nowadays. It's always like, yeah, no, I, this is like, this was my dad's advisor. He helped run the company, he helped build the company, he helped me with the company. And I was like, no, that's, it's a bad, it's bad, bad stuff. Do you think, uh, movie tropes came to that kind of stuff because that was like, the trope was that the trope in the comic book like i don't know how faithful they are at all to the comic books and whatnot uh i'm not an expert on the comics but i mean it, it is a it, i'd say it's a fairly uh real thing that happens in the business world like yeah yeah I, I was just wondering if like cinema cinematography and whatnot started doing that because it was in like comics and whatnot and obviously i think books and comics and whatnot obviously books i don't know about comics came before like fucking movies and whatnot were big right yeah i could uh i could definitely see that being like a common theme in uh in order to create like a villain just because it is like it's that person um in that um position of trust and then all of a sudden having that turn it's almost that that to me is like the like personification of villainry is just once you like the the ultimate villain is someone who just destroys your trust because then all of a sudden you're just like i don't know what to do now and like you're a son of a bitch for for fucking me over um so i think it is common it's definitely i think it is common in the comic books i don't know too too much about uh, the comic books unfortunately i'm very much a, a a movie learner rather than books but uh, I think for the most part, they stay pretty true to uh, to at least a, a baseline of the story. And the people who are involved are very, very much into like the comic book universe and everything like that. So, yeah, um, a couple other things I did notice um, when he said uh, or when he met Jensen in the cave, he's like, oh, a man named named Hope. I was like, OK, that's obviously like a foreshadow to like he's going to fucking die. Yeah. Um, Uh, I was going to say something else, but I just completely gapped it. Big gap. Yeah. And when he was like, don't worry, I'll see my family. I'll, I'll, we'll see my family after this. Like, you just knew, like, uh, something bad happened to this family. There's no way both of these guys get out. It's It's got to be the main character. The main character just dies within, like, minutes of the film. Oh, yeah. That'd be, a, that'd be great. I would love for movies to take like a dark turn like that because it, it nowadays I mean it's it's all predictable. Uh, it, you can you can almost call the end of the movie uh, just from the trailer at most most movies nowadays. Um, I did remember the other thing I wanted to talk about. It was uh, Shield because in this one they're like yeah no it's a strategic homeland intervention etc. I can't remember the full thing, but in every other Marvel thing uh, that has Shield in it set before this one they all say shield like this yeah. is the yeah. only one where he's like yeah no we got to come up with a different acronym but then they call themselves shield back in the the fucking 90s yeah yeah i i definitely wrote that one down too <laughs> yeah that one is i think that was like they they did that and then uh they just either didn't carry it over or here maybe 
it was just a prank that they played on Coulson since he was the new guy in uh, when we watched Captain Marvel, like he was the rookie. Maybe it's just a prank they pulled on him. And he's I'm pretty just sure like, they said shield in front of him in that movie. Oh, though, didn't they? I don't know. <laughs> it could have been, but that was, just said just because he's the only one that calls it shield. And well, he's the only one in Iron Man, but from no, the- post credit scene has yeah. has has blind guy. Nah, really we Fury. just watched the movie with him in it too. Yeah, Nick Fury. Fury. Put some Not Nick. No one calls him Nick. Everyone just calls him Fury. Yeah, even his mom. He's gonna make his kid call him Fury. If he has one. Yeah. Spoiler alert. He doesn't. You don't know that. <laughs> just like me. If I, I, my pronouns are yes, sir. What? <laughs> Everyone call me sir from now on. If I have kids, yes. they will call me sir. And if they don't, pistol whip. Boom. You're going to have to get a pistol first. I have one. Why? We live in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. It's not a real pistol. Oh, okay. It's heavy like one. It'll hurt. So I guess is it my turn? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't really have any other goofs and gags. It's just, I, I really enjoyed the movie. Um, I think it was well done. The, I agree with Zach um, that there is no other Tony Stark. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. is is Tony Stark at this point. Even at, like in this movie, you can just see like the role was basically made for him, or he was made for the role. It was it's perfect casting. Yeah, yeah, he plays a very similar character as uh, Sherlock Holmes, right? Just a pompous ass that is too smart for his own good, right? Yeah, except this time he gets the girl. Uh, yeah, he. I mean, I I don't know about the movies. I really forget the movies, but I'm pretty sure Sherlock Holmes gets with what's her name quite a few times in the books. I'm not a nerd, so Moriarty. <laughs> yeah, Moriarty. That <laughs> one. He sleeps with Moriarty. Yeah, that bitch. <laughs> That's all their rivalry really is. It's just like hiding the, the sexual wings. tension. Oh, Moriarty's at it again in, in his head. He's just like, oh my god, he wants to see me. Got a raging clue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my first note uh, was why did the one of the richest and most intelligent men in the world go to an active war zone to do his own market campaign for his weapon. Like, they, they already talked about unmanned drones and whatnot. You could clearly set that off from somewhere else. Why did you have to go there and just be like, hey, look, I'm in the middle of a fucking terrorist zone. The man that makes weapons. This this couldn't possibly go wrong. <laughs> uh, so that was, like, the first thing that just, like, made me laugh, because it was clearly he was just there to get for something to go wrong, right? Like, it was kind of a, a forced oopsie. But, I mean, it wasn't that big of a deal. Now, uh, this movie, I've seen it before. And, like Zach said, I am a little biased. I do like uh, Robert Downey Jr. playing the, um, like, pompous asshole characters. And if you think about it, if you went into this movie without knowing who Iron Man was, if you knew nothing about Iron Man, and you didn't know he was like the super rich guy and all that. And the first character that comes up is just like this relatively easy going, but just like full of himself, rich guy who sells weapons that just like kills millions of people. You have no reason to like the main character. The only reason you like him is because at the beginning is because it's Tony Stark and Iron Man, right? Like, he, he's just an asshole that kills people. He's exactly what the uh, news reporter said, the merchant of death, right? Uh, but because of how he's played as just, like, the sarcastic asshole and all that, for me anyways, you can't help but like him because it's it just that's the kind of character I like, a person who's too smart for his own good and knows it kind of thing. Bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, then there was like a a few little things in the movie when, uh, I can't remember his name, but the, the doctor that saved his life when he was buying time for Tony, instead of just like, you know, shooting at the people and like possibly hitting one 
I mean, killing a person's going to buy more time than just shooting at the ceiling and running at them screaming. Like, I, I really don't understand that. That's in a lot of movies is I'm going to go buy you time. And then they just like shoot randomly and don't even like try and hold a position or even try and kill someone. They just like, <laughs> and that really annoys me for some reason, because there's no reason to do that. But I mean, the character knew he was going to die. So in my opinion, if you knew you're going to die and it's basically suicide. So you can't even say you didn't want to kill someone for like religious reasons or anything like that. He was committing suicide doing that. So you can't be like, Oh, if he kills someone, he's not going to go to heaven. You don't go to heaven if you commit suicide in like most religions, I think. So yeah, I, th that was just weird. Uh, and then after he got shot or stabbed or whatever happened to him, it never actually showed what happened to him. Just that he was like stuck with a firing squad. So I imagine he got shot. The bad guys, when Tony was in Mark 1 of the uh, suit um, and he was walking out of the cave, they're just like, shoot at it! All the bullets are just bouncing off it. They're like, guns didn't work, let's run at it and try and hit it! So then he just punches them into a wall, like, what kind of retards are these people? <laughs> Death over <laughs> surrender. My fucking guns aren't, yeah, they're just like modern day Vikings, but without any of the cool gear and an empty gun. <laughs> capabilities <laughs> um and then there's like the the once he leaves the fucking uh cave he's just like okay i'm gonna use my flamethrowers on all these fucking weapon depots and hope that i just happen to activate my thrusters before they blow up those are some major firepower there and he's just like let's light it all on fire and hope it doesn't explode before i get out of here <laughs> that was uh uh, that, so basically, my least favorite part of this movie was that whole opening scene, is what I'm saying. There, at that point, there's no reason to like the character. I did, because I know how the movie goes. And all the decisions there were just, like, weirdly sketchy. But if that's the worst part of the movie, it's just that, like, first 15 minutes, the rest of the movie is not too bad. Um there's like random stupid parts that make me laugh like uh when he's talking to his like robot arms basically uh when he's making um mark ii and whatnot he's got like the one with the fucking fire extinguisher and one that's just there to hold stuff and when he was uh putting the new chest piece in the new arc reactor in his chest and he had the one i guess it couldn't grab the copper wire that was like in his chest and all this kind of stuff it was just like beside him and had like a medical tube attached to it. Once Pepper uh, got the magnet out and changed into the new arc reactor and all that kind of stuff, he was like yelling at it because there was shit on his desk. So then the robot goes over. It still has the medical tube and it's like graspers and it just like wobbles the medical tube at it because they didn't actually plan. I imagine that was just another Robert Downey Jr. Uh, ad lib thing because he goes off script a lot. Right? Uh, in yeah. all the movies he does. So I imagine that was just another one of those. Because the robot just like goes over and wobbles a medical tube at the desk. And I'm just like, what the fuck is that supposed to do? <laughs> I feel like it probably just gave control of those robots to the interns. <laughs> yeah. Try and go along with what Robert Tony Jr. says. <laughs> yeah. And then, again, it was for comedy reasons. So because it's for comedy reasons in a movie like this, it can kind of like go under the radar. But when he was first testing the uh, flight boots, he, he's a genius. That's literally his superpower is he has like beyond human capabilities with genius and obviously has a fuck ton of money. So a real genius like that has that kind of superpower would uh, know that 10% thrusters on his fucking boots are way too much. But obviously they did that just so they could throw show him being thrown into a wall for like laughs. Right. But. They just kind of like super downplayed his superpower there just for a chuckle. Yeah. Um, I don't know about that. Like, they, he, because he might have been going off of uh, like his old thrusters instead of like the, the capacity for the new ones. He might have been using like, because uh, he, he didn't have as much information on the new thrusters and the new boots and everything. I mean, he made them, right? So he has all yeah. the information. Uh, I don't know the specific calculations for doing that. <laughs> he does. Yeah. That that that's that's literally one of his lines. Is uh, the, my math's right? It's always right. 
This time he just didn't do the math. He's like, fuck <laughs> YOLO, we're just flying into the wall. Yeah, the try by fire. Just fucking yeah. get in there. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, oh, the, the fucking him shooting hostage taker, uh, the people who had, uh, taken others hostage when he was first using his, uh, Mark II suit to, uh, uh, fight terrorists, basically, the first time he took it out. The risk of the terrorists, like, pulling the trigger when they get shot, because there's a very specific spot you have to shoot people in order to one kill them instantly and two there's still sometimes a reflex when you get shot in the head that you're just gonna pull the trigger and he just like shoots eight of them at once and none of them pull the trigger i know it's just like a superhero movie right but it's, that's the whole reason that why people who have hostages don't get shot is because there's a chance that the gun just goes off anyways right yeah but his math is never wrong he calculated it all he calculated the yeah. reflexes of oh, them after 100%. being shot in the cranium. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, because well, I'm I've never been shot in the head, but I assume uh, I all messages that. stop. Please do. Um, I, but I assume it doesn't send any more messages um, to the body. That's why it just goes so limp and falls backwards, right? Uh, muscles spasm out when they lose signal. Like, have you ever seen like? A fully dead animal just moving. Yeah, but I mean, I've also seen people get shot in the head. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, it, it, obviously, it depends. But that, generally speaking, that's why one of the reasons why they don't shoot hostage takers. Right? It's again, it's not a big deal. It's a superhero movie. It was just something that I picked up. Yeah, I figured but, it was just like his his computer guidance system, like knowing exactly where to shoot because yeah, it googled it real quick. <laughs> One of the most realistic things in this movie was when, uh, after he killed all those people and blew up the first set of Jericho rockets that uh, the bad guy had. What was the bad terrorist name? Do, does anyone know? Uh, the Ten Rings. Or do you yeah, that, to... that was the organization. What about the the guy that got his face burnt when Raza. Tony shot a rock? That was Raza? Yeah. And was his last name Al Ghul? No. <laughs> uh... <laughs> and Universe. <laughs> Um, after Tony blew up Raz's uh, first set of missiles or whatever, he was flying, and the most realistic part of this movie was, the Americans are like, there's something flying! It just blew up all of our enemies! But I don't know what it is, so let's kill it anyway! <laughs> <laughs> like, it literally just blew up your enemies and, like, major weapons depot, and you're just like, nope, it's strange, we shoot it down, boys! Oh, yeah. That made me laugh, because that is just like... A stupid thing to do, but a very American thing to do at the same time. Yeah. Uh, the only other thing that really stood out to me as, like, this wouldn't actually happen is when uh, uh, Pepper told S.H.I.E.L.D. about the whole, like, terrorist plot and how uh, the bald guy, I don't remember his name. Obadiah. Obi or something. Obadiah. Uh, was, like put a hit out on Tony and all this kind of stuff. They're just like, okay, we believe you, which is sketchy enough, but whatever. Uh, I mean, shit happens. But then they're like, we're going to take you, instead of just taking your key card, to where the suspected terrorist is, slash uh, terrorist, fu not funder, but supplier is, so that you can open the door. No, FBI or... Who the higher-ups is not going to take a random civvy to go arrest a terrorist supplier. They're going to be like, okay, you stay here. He could literally have bombs on him. Yeah, but, but I mean, then... That was so that Pepper could be in danger and then Tony's just like, no! Right? Like, that was the whole yeah. thing for that. Oh, you never know. He could have he could have done that with Agent Coulson. They shook hands earlier on they in the did. movie. Yeah. They basically fucking... <laughs> did he know what Obadiah looked like? Because it might have been just like, hey, point out the... the fucker who, who's being uh, selling weapons to bad boys. Yeah, see see the it's guy like the, that's the... blinding you with uh, the shine on his head, it's that guy. <laughs> it's also the, like, not co-owner, but basically the second in command of the most powerful company in at least America, if not the world, so. I imagine they at least know of him. He's the CFO. The Can't fuck off. Can't, Can't fuck off, <laughs> yeah. Uh, a funny part was when uh, Obadiah was in his suit, and then he got, like, stuck in the doorway. 
And then instead of just going through the doorway because he's in a super powered suit, he thinks it's or decides it's easier to go through the re- concrete and steel reinforced ceiling and the however many feet of dirt above him than it is to just break the door. Oh yeah. <laughs> that was like, mm, that was obviously just to show how strong this thing is from a cinematic perspective. But that dumb as fuck. <laughs> Well, I mean, hey, if you're going to break shit, you might as well just do it once, right? Because, like, you break through the doorway, there's another doorway, you got to break through that. There's a set of stairs you have to try and navigate. Um, yeah, but then he's going to have to replace his parking lot after he kills Tony because he just ripped it up. What the it's fuck? Funny. It's a black site, and also he can say that it was Tony doing it because only Tony has suit. Yeah. Uh, they didn't even know Tony had suit at that point. Yeah, but, well, you got to figure he'd build another suit or have, like, a Gucci or Armani. Yeah, I, I met the public. Uh, if he was like trying to blame it on Tony for the public, right? Yeah. They didn't know he had a suit at that point. They just knew. Actually, at that point, they didn't know anything because that was the first time the public really saw him was when he was fighting Obadiah, right? Yeah. yeah. Plus, I mean, well, he probably could have just blamed it on the arc reactor, right? Like, oh, it was an explosion. Yeah. We don't have any insurance money, please. Um, I also wanted to point out real quick that yeah, go ahead. Uh, Pepper Potts, played by Gwyneth Paltrow, would have been fine because she has magic crystals stored up her cooch. Yeah. That would make her uh, immune to the repulsor blasts and or chain whip. Yeah, it's uh, it's really unfortunate that she's in this movie. Yeah. She is just like a 100% crazy cunt. And if she's not crazy, she's just a bitch that sells false products to people to make money. Like yeah. you're already a millionaire from being in movies and shit. Why do you got to scam people too? Stop, stop being such awful people. <laughs> Just on that grind, bro. Just yeah. on that grind. Yeah. yeah. You ever had a steamed vagina before? Have I ever what? Have you ever had a steamed vagina before? Steamed vagina? Yeah. I've never had a vagina in my possession. <laughs> Sounds like a dish. Are you trying to like feed me someone's steamed vagina? No, What's that's, happening that's here? What, that's one of the things that she sells. The steaming vagina. I know she sells a candle that apparently smells like her vagina. Is that like testacuzzi? It's like a it's like a little sauna for your veg. I think so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. You know she what it's called? I'm gonna Google it. I don't know what it's called. No. All I know she has her own Sarah website Leo. that sells all her snake oil. And yeah, shit, so. we won't mention it here because it's scam. Yeah. Um. Do you know what? Allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. In the when uh, he's first doing his full suit flight thing, um, in that scene where he, when he's flying out of the garage, just before he hits the wall, um, in his visor it actually shows that because of his speed he's gonna hit that spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's one thing that like the only other thing in the movie that kind of bothered me was uh, before he installed Jarvis into the the suit he had trouble flying it and it took him like i don't remember the numbers but he was on like day six and he was still kind of fucking up on it right like there was like 30 plus trials and then one and then he was finally able to like hover and then once he installed jarvis obviously jarvis can do the actual flying and whatnot because it can do the calculations a hell of a lot faster than him right but then obadiah has never been in his suit before he's just like yeah i can fly fuck you (laughs) yeah well he just went he just went straight up he just followed yeah. Tony straight up. Yeah, I guess so, but it's still, it's a little sketchy that he's never been in the suit before, and he just, like, can pilot it perfectly. I mean, I know his suit was a lot simpler than Tony's. It, it, it was just, it, it's, obviously, you can't have, like, a montage of the bad guy practicing. That doesn't make any sense, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I have an explanation and a, or an analogy. Um, so, Obadiah's suit would be, like, driving a Ford Ranger in a straight line. Fairly simple. Pretty much anyone on the face of the planet could do it, regardless of uh, their driving experience. As long as you know, like, the basics of a car. Uh, whereas Tony's suit is like a, a Formula One car. So it's, it's going to take uh, either a lot of experience or a lot of help, uh, which is the Jarvis in this case. Um, I, I don't know if I agree with that. Well, I, I like your analogy. The The problem with it is the fact that, uh, generally speaking, everyone's driven a car before. So jumping into a Ford Ranger or whatever your uh, uh, thing was means familiarity. As far as I know, Obadiah had never 
been in anything like this before and it's not just like he's just walking right it's all especially with the size of obadiah's suit is his name obadiah am i getting that right yeah okay especially with the size of his suit it's not just like moving your legs and arms and it's copying you right it's got like whole internal controls and all this kind of stuff because uh when they blew his visor or whatever he took the head or the whole like upper body off and you could see just how much bigger this suit was than him right so unless he's just got like a treadmill in his suit and he's walking and it's just copying him i i think it's a little bit more complicated than driving a car yeah, but he also the he also had like the top engineers of Stark Industries building the suit. So I think it for the most part it they were able to program it not as well as obviously Jarvis, but they were able to program it to at least do the the basics of of what needed to be done so that there wasn't too much that he actually needed to do throughout. Plus I think he actually is um in, himself pretty intelligent um just being part of the tech company and stuff like that like he seemed to even like looking at the arc reactor in in tony's chest and understanding the other one that they built it made it seem like he was also the one that helped design the arc reactor with uh howard stark was it howard that uh designed it not tony the big one yeah yeah the big one was uh was howard uh howard did it uh later on or I think probably in like the sixties or seventies, I would say of the of the like MCU timeline periods. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. The there's not an actual whole lot of information about Obadiah in the movie. He's just like I am co-owner slash co like interest in the thing. I sell weapons to the bad guys like that. That's his basically his entire story arc is summed up there. The second in command who wants to be number one. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. I, I kind of wish they went a, like a little bit more into him, maybe a little bit more into his backstory. If you say, if he was like jealous of Howard too, or if he was just jealous of, uh, um, Tony because he was like the young gun that just took it over because he had the name on it kind of thing. I I do kind of wish they went into a little bit more of him rather than just I'm bad guy, greedy, LOL kind of thing. Yeah. I think the, uh, just because it was like the starting point of the MCU, I think they just sort of went with the usual, like he is, he's the bad guy just, and then just gave him like basics, like just to lead up to a bad guy. Cause instead of having, like the development you have with uh say like something like a thanos um type villain or something like that just to keep it steady and then as it went on as the mcu got bigger and bigger like you sort of got more into the backstories of the actual villains himself because i don't think like realistically i don't think uh so his uh his bad guy i think in the in the comic books is called warmonger i'm pretty sure yeah but that's also obadiah stain yeah no, no, yeah, yeah. So, it, but he's not, uh, it's not like a big time, like, bad guy. He's just sort of <laughs> like one of, like, a, like a D-list villain, almost. Like, he's just kind of there. Whereas when you get to someone like um, the Mandarin or something like that, that's that one's more in-depth of a, of a villain or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I just... Uh... Yeah, again, it's just personal preference. I wish I knew more about the villain rather than just I'm greedy, lol, kind of thing. That's just me. Yeah, they. Uh, I mean, I'm. I just uh, walked, went to his Wikipedia page, and the character's background is fucking dark. I've read like the first two sentences. Uh, so basically, his dad was a degenerate gambler. His mom was uh, already dead. Um, I guess died in childbirth. Uh, one day, his father considered himself on a lucky streak and played a game of Russian roulette. Shot himself in the head while young Obadiah watched. This trauma caused Obadiah to go bald and shaped his outlook on life. Huh. So that might be why they didn't bring it in. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I also... mean, they, they, they've definitely changed other things. It's not like they they didn't have or they didn't have the ability to change his backstory because it was a yeah. little dark. Um, I mean, I don't know if they would want to change it. I mean, they they might not show it. Uh, uh but he they might even go deeper in. Uh, to his backstory, because apparently he appeared in uh, Spider-Man: Far From Home. 
I don't know if this is... It says archival footage, so maybe it wasn't actually in the movie. I have no idea. I've never seen it. Which we movie? will. Uh, uh, Spider-Man Far From Home. Oh, yes. Yes. That'll be the... That's the last one in the... Was Do you remember, Zach? Was he in it? Which one? Obadiah. Uh, no. It says on Wikipedia that he was. Or, Ar- but it says archival footage, so I don't know if that means... It got cut or something. It could be that, or it could be like, uh, um, oh yeah, he was, he was, cause he, uh, you know, he wasn't really in it. It was just a clip to show, cause uh, all the bad oh. guys was, uh, um, basically Mysterio is they're all ex Stark employees. So the guy that he's yelling at, uh, whenever he's just like. Where he's like, Tony Stark built this in a cave with a box of scraps. Um, that guy that he's yelling at helps Mysterio, um, which is the bad guy for Far From Home, help uh, do his illusions and stuff like that. So it was literally an archive in the movie. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. But yeah, that guy, that poor engineer, just got yelled at, and then just got, he's just like, "Hey, dude, like, I'm not Tony Stark." Now, the the acting itself, Jeff Bridges was a great villain. Apparently, he didn't have a script. I'm trying to find where I read that. Um, really? Here, yeah, on uh, on IMDb, it's under trivia. It says Jeff Bridges felt uh, said he felt really uncomfortable not having a script or rehearsals says normally he's very prepared and knows his lines word for word realizing it was like he was in a 200 million dollar student film took the pressure off him and made it fun yeah i do know yeah a lot of the actors don't get access to the to the scripts full scripts anyways oh oh yeah i guess that makes sense with the marvel movies yeah secretive yeah, I think uh, Benedict Cumberbatch was the only one that got to read all of Infinity War and Endgame script, like all the way well, through. Yeah. Other ones That's just got their lines. Just to know everything. Yeah, he read all fourteen million rewrites. <laughs> fourteen million and one, isn't it? And then he chose the one where they won as yeah. the uh, one to play out yeah he's just like you know what i think with all the build-up this is the script that's probably the best choice and and the uh uh russo brothers were just like yeah you know what you're probably right that's probably the big one i still love that theory uh from a uh, straw hat luffy uh, i think his name is on on tiktok but he does a, a bunch of marvel theories um saying that he had to go through 14 million because like there was a bunch a bunch of scenarios where they won uh, but there was only one scenario in which they won and didn't set off a reaction from the TVA yeah for, uh, for Jeff and anyone who doesn't know is uh, uh, the Loki show on Disney plus you should go watch it it'll explain it um, but I guess quick explanation is they they made it so there's only one timeline and if you fuck up that timeline they're gonna come and erase you yeah they are patrolling like oh they they removed 14 million timelines uh they well they they remove variants from those timelines to make sure that everything happens the way it's supposed to um so for those of you who don't watch it spoilers a little bit of spoilers uh, especially for the next section of uh um marvel movies uh but There's a villain called Kang, um, and in the Loki show, he actually is the one that helps control the flow of time because what ended up happening was uh, all these different variants of Kang, so each section of the multiverse has its own version of you, and all these ones uh, were all uh, the ones of Kang were super smart and everything like that and then they built up to this big battle and then each multi it was basically a multiversal war until this one basically streamlined it trimmed out everything and then made one continuous timeline so any so dr strange going through all the different timelines and stuff helped to find out which one would work that would keep that timeline secure so that 
another multiversal war did not erupt. I have a feeling I'm going to hate that. And there's going to be some real jank time travel shenanigans, I imagine. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's definitely interesting. The, the Loki show was pretty good. And uh, they're showing them how um, they trim like the timelines and stuff like that to make it continuous. And then what's going to lead into um, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. It's going to be a very, very interesting it's gonna be uh, madness, even. Oh yeah, it's actually that movie's actually gonna be a horror movie. What? Yeah, it's real yeah. fucking angry. Yeah, uh, directed by Sam Raimi. Who did M Night Shyamalan? No, he did the first three, uh, the original Sony uh, Spider Man with Tobey Maguire. Uh, is that good? I have no idea. That's just a fact. I, I know you would know <laughs> nothing about it. Yeah, I know. No, I'm wondering, were they good movies? uh superhero movies yeah they were actually the third one was uh a little questionable uh i'm i've been yeah <laughs> uh i've been told that the fourth one was going to fix everything but because it did so poorly at the box office because they just like changed peter parker's personality into this douche canoe like it, it, it was just real bad and i guess the casting for uh some of the other ones weren't they didn't like too much but uh overall the first two were great and that like i think that's what started between that and x-men it's like started a big um love of comic book movies yeah i uh, now is it going to be like an r-rated horror movie or like a teeny buffer horror movie uh it's not going to oh, be no. r-rated i dropped my vape pod in a puddle yeah, that's about the most horrific thing. <laughs> yeah, it'll it'll still be like I think it's like it definitely is not gonna be like slasher type horror, but it'll probably be like uh, maybe maybe jump scary type deal, but definitely the the scarier version. They they're not gonna do R rated until they get to like Blade, Moon Knight, Deadpool, that type of thing, where they can actually get into it. Whereas these heroes, you sort of want them to to stay, I guess, kid friendly. Veered. I, I I don't know if I've ever watched like a not R rated horror movie. I'd have to look. Yeah, I don't know. There, probably, I don't think there's too many. Anyways, the uh, the link I or the picture I I showed in here actually shows uh, um, the delivery uh, schedule. Or your weapon shipping shipment invoice, um, and the uh, delivery was made on the vessel, the MSC Lebowski. Now that's a throwback to Jeff Bridges uh, because he starred as the dude in the Big Lebowski. Never seen. Nope, didn't think he did. <laughs> this these little these little tidbit facts are just for Jordan. <laughs> yeah, shut the fuck up, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to absorb content and information. I'll allow you okay. to absorb my content. Jeff would I don't be, want to. Jeff would be so busy if, if every time we made a movie reference, he just added it onto a list and started watching all these movies. I, I start I wouldn't. now, I'll eventually be done. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. That's the thing. <laughs> well, no, I mean, we make references to movies, like old movies a lot. Yeah, he'll be... Uh, He'll, he'll be like Captain America in Avengers. Like, I got that reference. I get that reference. <laughs> I'm the spit. Yeah. It's also uh, going to be in about 70 years, though. Yeah, I'm going to have to go into, like, fucking cryo to just have it all uploaded into my brain or something. Yeah. Um, the, the fucking quickness and the, and the wit in this movie was actually really well done. And I don't know if it was strictly Robert or... Uh, um, or the writers themselves, but even Pepper Potts had some like some decent. Um, we'll take out witty... the trash. One. Yeah, good. yeah, that one was just pure. This girl thinks she's hot shit, and then you're just like, "Bitch, please." Yeah, that I don't understand why. Like that character was. It's supposed to show just how like irresistible Iron Man is, but she's just like, "I fucking hate you. You kill everyone, girl." 
and then like immediately in bed with him and like oh, i'm so good i slept with tony stark like she did a 180 like real quickly okay and then and then immediately like the next time you see her she's just like ragging on him again like fuck off yeah uh, okay well he, that's because he didn't call um yeah uh, <laughs> second off and first off if you were sitting at a bar and you're like yeah no i don't think ryan reynolds is that good an actor like that pool's kind of funny but he did that green lantern movie and and then he came up behind. Thought we you weren't allowed like, to talk about that. You shush, shush, shush. And then he comes up behind you, and he's just like, "Hey, do you want to like go to my hotel room and fuck?" You, <laughs> you're telling me you would. Does he say I money? like that? No, yeah, yeah, I mean, he probably would. He's yeah, he's that's right. Yeah. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> I am Ryan Reynolds. Would you like to do a fucking with me? Well, in that case. No, me I either. mean, no. Ryan Reynolds because is I'm weird, so. sweetheart. Okay, He's Canadian? Fucking, yeah. Give me a character from World of Warcraft. How dare you? If Illidan was... If you were Girl! talking... <laughs> <laughs> it's an emo bitch! Also, I don't support Blizzard anymore. Ragathor? Okay, what... Uh, Did you say uh, Ragathor? What is yeah, that? I don't know any what characters, Jeff. My Loctar. favorite movie isn't the, the World of Warcraft movie, like yours. Yeah. Locked. <laughs> yes. Rothgar? Uh, yeah, um... Oh, and then that, there's that. Those uh, are Vikings, aren't they? Uh, it could be. Well, they could be orcs. You never know. I think in Rothgar disguise. is actually a place in Skyrim. Yeah, it is. Like Rothgar? Yeah. That's where the Greybeards are. Which I will never go. <laughs> <laughs> I will never see these beasts. I finished the game. When you went to see the Greybeards? No. I finished everything else. Fuck the <laughs> story. Just every single side quest possible. Never go see them. You're level a hundred, and then you're just like, no, I'm done. I'm over yep. this game. I'm currently doing that. I have a, a save file ready. <laughs> That's um, basically how I played uh, uh, Skyrim. I eventually did complete it, but I did everything else first. Um, I, w I wanted to just give a few before because I, I noticed we're getting around the hour mark. Um, these are some of the issues that I thought Jeff would have. Uh, so there was a rocket at, at around three minutes. There's a rocket scene uh, burrowing into the dirt next to Tony before exploding. The warhead is clearly blue and likely uh, an MK-153 uh, small round. Any munition in, uh, in use with the military that is blue, such as the small round, uh, is used for the sole purpose of training and would therefore not explode. Uh, yeah, but also in real life, they don't uh, use Stark Industry rockets, and they can paint it whatever they want. So, yeah, but I'm just saying. Uh, at, at around 24 minutes, uh, molten palladium is incandescent at about 1550 degrees Celsius, glowing yellow white if not white hot. Uh, the palladium that Yinsen pours is nowhere near that temperature. It's, uh, it's not even at red heat. <laughs> yeah, it looked more like mercury, to be honest. Tasty. Which, yeah, that that's a very good point. In order to for most metals to be melted down, they do have to be red hot, and that one was just like a weird silver. Boom. <laughs> what was your Got third it. one? Didn't you say you had three? Did I? I thought you did. I'll find one right here. Uh, and I want, and what around fifty-one minutes, Stark secures his upgraded power supply in his chest by turning it clockwise until it clicks into place. Uh, when Stain steals it at around hour 35 minutes, he also turns it clockwise to unlock it and remove it instead of counterclockwise. <laughs> yeah, I didn't notice that. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's because it was like melted in, like whatever machine he was using, just sort of just like cut it all up. So we just turn it whatever way. Just, to finish the just cut out the threads that were in it for some reason. Hell yeah. Oh, that's one thing that I didn't write down, but I thought about. Okay, so this guy, I, I need to do a little bit of research while I'm talking about this. So I'm going to try and type and talk at the same time. Um, this guy can literally create uh, fucking infinite energy. Not, not infinite, but basically infinite clean energy in a cave in his pocket, basically, right? Like the mini arc reactor, all that kind of stuff. Yet, and this is based in real life in like 2008 or so, ish, something like that is when it's based. He's got shrapnel in his heart, so he has to wear his little thing, which is attached to a magnet, which is all pretty dumb, but whatever. 
And that magnet has to be very precise in order to suspend it and not rip it out, by the way. But again, we overlooked that. Why didn't he just get a heart transplant? Like, what the... F what When he got back, why wasn't he just like, okay, it's, let's go get this so I don't have to wear a fucking battery pack at all times. Because he wants yeah. to wear the battery pack at all times, because that means he's Iron Man. And the, uh, the shrapnel was not in his heart yet. It was in the uh, um, arteries. It was yeah, making you can replace to those too. You can replace basically everything in you. The first like heart transplant was in 1967. D's nuts. <laughs> I think it, it was just like his obsession with the Iron Man suit. And he's like, yeah, well, if I carry the power source with me at all times, I'm the only one that can have or, or that can use the suits. I mean, I suppose that that's that's a reason, but I'd rather just put it in my pocket than than have shrapnel in in and around my heart, right? Like, it just sounds like a high risk, low reward situation you're doing. I mean, if I had if I could trade off shrapnel near my heart with a magnet uh, for Iron Man suit, I probably would. But he could literally have both. He doesn't yeah. have to make a trade. Yeah, that, that's what I'm getting at. I, I don't know. I think it goes into it later in the movies because I know like Pepper does have uh, conversations with Tony about it. Um, so I, I don't want to like go in further because it, it will be discussed later. Yeah, I, I, I figured it was just because like the comics were maybe written before heart transplants were like even a thing. And then the writers of the movie were just like, didn't think about it kind of thing they're just like ah eh, fuck it who cares right because most people aren't going to be like me and be like why didn't he just fix it <laughs> yeah well technically he did fix it just not in the way that you wanted yeah why didn't he actually fix it instead of suspending metal shrapnel in his body in a very precise way using a precise magnet that's not neither going to pull it nor push it <laughs> uh, and just, then pepper just... just rips it out and he goes oh god <laughs> Still, and it'll hold the magnetic uh, uh, charge, if you will, for for a couple seconds at least. That's why he didn't go in a heart attack right away. Um, I mean, he, there's no way he would have like that whole section with once the the battery packs out, him going into cardiac arrest is like really quite stupid if you think about it, because he'd go into cardiac arrest because the shrapnel has embedded itself further. Right? So either A, that's not going to happen right away and your magnet's just holding them in suspension, or B, it's going to happen right away and putting the magnet back in isn't going to fix it. You've It's already done the damage, right? Like, So that whole, like, when Jebediah or Obadiah, whatever his name is, uh, took his battery pack and left, and then he, like, crawled down the stairs and he was, like, basically dying. That whole scene is just, like, a bunch of crap because... Like I said, it either is in your heart or it's not. It's not slowly, you know what I mean? Well, didn't they say that oh, in really? the uh, like near the beginning? That's why they call them the Walking Dead, because it go it takes like a week for the shrapnel to actually make it to the heart. Right. So why was he suddenly like so weak he couldn't walk when the power pack was taken out of his chest? Well, oh, that was because of the uh, old power pack. Yeah. That was because of the Jebediah's ear thing, that like uh, temporary paralysis. He said it was supposed to like actually paralyze him for 15 minutes, and Tony's like, you know what, man mode, I need to go get a different uh, magnet power. Okay, that I will 100% accept that. Then what about the time when Pepper took it out of his chest? He started going into cardiac arrest within seconds. I think that was just because, like, maybe the magnet did stop uh, altogether, um, and the, the shrapnel could start to move again. And I mean, I don't know, I don't know the full timeline, but I'm assuming it'd been, I'd say, a week or two, maybe maybe closer to a month uh, since he got back. So I mean, it it, it had probably healed uh, a little bit at least by that point. So having shrapnel start to move again and start tearing shit would probably hurt at least a little bit. Mm, hurt absolutely but when he's like maybe he was just being facetious and all that again it, it's not really explained he shouldn't be going into cardiac arrest immediately and if he does putting the magnet back in is not going to stop that because it's already damaged the heart you know what i mean like it's already embed itself if it's embed itself enough to cause cardiac arrest putting the magnet in and pulling it back out isn't going to help it's going to just 
unplug the holes that it made in your heart that caused the cardiac arrest in the first place. It, it's not a big deal. It's just, it, it's just movie bullshit, right? Yeah, and I, I, I agree. It could have been him just like being a dick about it because we don't see and we don't get any other information other than him saying he's actually going into cardiac arrest and the monitor mm-hmm. beeping. But uh, yeah, I don't. I never paid full attention. Did the monitor start to slow? Because I know when, uh, what's his nuts? Obadiah hit him with the fucking par- paralysis buzzer, whatever the fuck it was. <laughs> Uh, the background noise during the whole crawl was his heart slowing down, right? So I didn't see. Um, sorry, I'm genuinely confused. I can't remember. Apparently I googled The Walking Dead and I don't remember why. Uh, because <laughs> oh, that's, that's what, what they, they were call called it. when they have the yes. shrapnel in their heart. Um, but then you ended up just getting zombies. Yeah. Um, oh fuck. Almost at, we're at the hour mark. All right, let's. Uh, well, Jordan finished looking up what he what he wanted to. Uh, let's uh, let's find out what Jeff's actual rating of the movie was. Uh, this is a movie I'd watch again. This is a movie I think I've watched a couple times before. So, oh fuck! I just screwed up what I was doing. I was trying to find that uh, section. Um. So I'd probably, I'd obviously watch it again if I've watched it several times before. I like the Robert Downey Jr. character. It's a shame that the Pepper Potts actress is in it, but I mean, what can you do? I think this was before she went crazy anyways, or at least publicly went crazy. Uh, I'd probably give this movie like a 7. I'd have no problem watching it again. Oh, well, look at that. Um, I'm going with a solid 9. I know the last two I gave eights, but I'm giving this a nine because it is the one that started them all. The casting was done right. The writing was great. The villain, like the the portrayal of the villain was awesome, even though you could see it um, coming. The uh, going in and and even like reading the little little Easter eggs and little facts just as I'm going through on uh, uh, r slash movie details. Um, and even I'm still learning new things about this movie, all the little small things that they have in there. Um, and yeah, just the fact that it starts out the whole MCU, which honestly span, it's been 10 years of, of our lives and it's going to continue on. And I'm so excited for it. And I'm so happy that this is what started off. So yeah, I'm going with a nine. So what you're saying is you fucking lied to me. What do you mean I lied to you? You said, well, this is a great movie. They just get better from here. And then you rated this one higher than the other ones. Yeah, so fucking not lied to me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but what about what about Captain America? It came out after? Has a lower no, rating. No, it gets yeah. better from here timeline. Oh! God, you silly <laughs> bitch! Uh, I'm going to do this movie in 8. Came out in 2008. I think that's great. I think the movie's great. Uh, it, it was it was the the one uh, that started everything, um, and uh, I really enjoy spoilers. Uh, that it the the MCU uh, movies, anyways, um, uh, they started um, the, the the last line in the first movie and the last line or last important line in the last movie were the same. Yeah, and that was actually from an editor. Really? Okay. Yeah, originally. He's a smart editor. Originally, the uh, well in the in the first Iron Man when he's like I am Iron Man, which that alone, like that statement is wow. Um, just to start it off, where you're just like this is the character. Um, there was uh, they filmed it and they were they were editing Endgame, um, and Tony actually just snapped, and then the editors like that like there should be something else, like he should be doing something else other than just snapping. And that's when they came up with, like, oh, maybe he should come in and say that. So Robert Downey Jr. was actually really hesitant in order to do that because he was like, I have to get in that mindset again, like that emotional state. Um, but I'm so glad they did it. I'll probably bring up that, that whole spiel again once uh, once we actually get to the end game one. But Did you know that him saying I am Iron Man in this movie wasn't in the script? He went off script to do that? He wasn't yeah. supposed to say that there? <laughs> 
Yeah, it's he has so many off script things, but they are pure gold. Yeah, like the whole blueberries thing in the one Avengers. He wasn't supposed to have food. He snuck it onto set and was yeah. just like blueberry. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I think stuff like that it really adds to movies, though. Like I, every single movie that is uh, like uh, at a seven or higher, um, I think has all those parts in it. Like there's always at least one scene that was improvised in, in it. Yeah, just like, uh, what was it, one of the writers on Parks and Rec when Chris Pratt came up with, uh, I googled your symptoms here and it says you have network connectivity issues. That yeah. was an improvised line and the writers are just like, I. it's such a good line and I fucking hate that it was improvised and we didn't write it. Just uh, it, it, It's a good line, I've never yeah. heard that. And ju- Yeah, and just having the actors being able and the, even them like just letting it go, you're like, you know what? That actually works with this character. Um, just shows that, like, when you have a great sh- show or movie or anything like that, like, it's unreal to, to see. But uh, other than that, thanks for uh, thanks for joining us on this week um, where we reviewed Iron Man. Uh, don't forget to to give us a follow here on Twitch um, as well as Twitter, Instagram. Uh, follow it on Spotify where you can. Next week, uh, we'll be back on Saturday uh, to do the next uh, movie review, which will be Iron Man 2. Is that the next one? I believe so. She. Yep, Iron Man 2, according to the list behind me. But you guys uh, you guys take care. Uh, look out for each other. Um, and Or and, don't. We, uh, we can't boss you around. Yeah, really. I can. This, uh, don't steam your vagina, please. It's send me weird. money. Yeah, send send Jordan money. Subscribe to his OnlyFans. Buy uh, me a testacuzzi. No. What are you gonna steep your balls? Yeah. <laughs> Buy me a and jacuzzi. Then he's gonna drink my body. <laughs> I'll put my testacuzzi in the jacuzzi. You can't double oh. steep. Yeah, I can. That's too many. It's too much tea. I can't. Handle that power. It's not tea, it's fucking bath water. <gasps> Guys. Nut juice. <laughs>